My mission is to help over 10,000 companies to create an inclusive workplace culture. Um, so why 10,000 companies? Well, I know, as I say, having climbed that corporate ladder, that there are many organisations out there that really do have a desire to create inclusive workplace cultures, but they have to unpick traditions, years of traditions and ingrained behaviours, and it's not going to happen overnight. And as a consequence, businesses are doing things very piecemeal, um, and or when they remember that gender pay reporting is coming up again for another round, and therefore they must do something quick. So I'm on a mission, as I say, to enable these 10,000 companies to create sustainable, inclusive workplace cultures. And for me, as I say, it's just... I'm not great at maths, but even I can work that out. You know, for those organisations that have got 250 employees um, or more, it's about going to affect about 2.5 million people. You know, that, that's just huge. Um, and I want to create an environment where they feel a sense of belonging when they come to work, where they feel respected uh, and valued for their unique difference. And I know that that is really important for you all here today in terms of, you know, the mobility of, of individuals that come from different countries, from different cultures, to really add the richness to your business. So I know that it's absolutely vital for you as well. So I think it's fair to say that the world is changing and it's going to keep changing. So inclusion, diversity, it's not going to stop. It's just going to increase. So we have to embrace it. We certainly don't want to risk alienating any of our customers if we just are not representative of who they are. And that's why it's really important. We certainly don't want to risk alienating anyone at work. And sadly, those things do happen because ultimately they will take their talent somewhere else and they'll leave, they'll go to the competitors. Um, and that's absolutely something that you, you have to stop. So diversity is important. It's absolutely essential. It's important that you represent, as I say, your customers, your marketplace, um, and your consumers. And ultimately, it's about enabling everybody to be the best version of themselves. So that's why, as I say, I am on this mission. But what I have come to realize is, as I say, that it's, it's difficult. It's definitely not gonna happen overnight. So for me, I wanted to create a, and use my experience and working with my clients and things that they have shared with me to create a model and a methodology, quite frankly, to move inclusion and diversity off what is currently on the too difficult pile. Yeah, it's something that many exec boards say, yes, yes, we do, and then they assign uh, you know, a, a job to the most junior individual and don't give them the, the kind of the power to be able to do something with it. Um, and so I have created a methodology called Tribe. Um, I wanted to call it Tribe because ultimately, you know, we, we build our tribes. When we're born, we, we kind of come into the world in a tribe. We have a different relationship with people within that tribe and we uh, kind of grow and develop um, as we move forward. So what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to take you through each of the stages of Tribe. Um, so the first one is about taking stock. Um, so we do know, as I say, for those organisations, certainly within the UK, that have 250 or more employees, they're now required to submit their gender pay data. Um, and that really is an opportunity, of course, to focus mind and look at uh, what's happening. It's only a small snapshot in reality. So it's really important that you start to look at other elements of what happens within your business. So resourcing. You know, where do you currently uh, seek your talent from? What methods do you currently use within your organization? And do they enable you to attract the talent from the widest possible pool? Or do you just do the same thing that you've been doing for the last 5, 10, 15 years?
Do you rely on the same recruitment partners to support you? And whilst, yes, you may have built a really strong relationship with them, so they know your company and they know what you do, but actually, do they really understand what your position is on diversity? Do they challenge you? I recently um, was working with an exec board um, and they're in the golfing industry um, and they are looking for uh, a new senior hire and they said to me that their recruiter challenged them and said what do you want to do about diversity um, and their response from the HR director was well I just want the best person for the job now luckily we were in a coaching session and I said that's a brilliant response but what do you mean by that and actually, the recruiter could absolutely have challenged them further um, at that point. And what the stretch needs to be is, you know, um, do you make blind recruitment? You know, do you look for blind CVs? Do you um, ensure that the, the, the uh, selection panel is really diverse? If you don't have that ability at that senior level, bring some of your more junior members up. It's a great stretch opportunity for them as well. So what do you do now when you, when you go through the selection? process. Um, you know, AI is brilliant, and I know we've got a session on that later uh, today um, as well, but how do you ensure that those kind of software tools are not already pre-programmed with biases that mean that, again, you're losing the best candidates? Retention is absolutely key. So, uh, and that sort of then dovetails into um, reward. So, you know, how do you ensure, as I say, that you are retaining these people, that your performance management processes, for instance, um, aren't tailored or, or, or uh, with uh, smattered with, um, uh, with biases as well, so that people, your leaders, have the capability to conduct performance reviews effectively. You know, looking at the reward of individuals, um, again, is it fair and consistent? Is it going to attract people that want to come to your company, whether it be from overseas or whether you're sending individuals overseas? So all of those things are really important from an inclusion perspective. You absolutely have to, at first, go, you know, what, what do we have? What do we currently have? And the most important thing, really, is to be honest. Um, you know, if you currently have an organisation that isn't inclusive, sorry, um, and is a bit toxic, well, do you know what? As a leadership team, you have to own that. You have to work out where is it coming from, who's setting the tone, and how do we need to address those things. It's really important that anything in relation to unconscious bias is weaved through all of activity. So, you know, what happens, as I say, when you make selection and recruitment decisions? Unconscious bias is bigger than just some organisations have got online training. You know, some organisations uh, do kind of invest a little bit more. It has to be weaved through everything and people need to understand their role and contribution in it as well. Employee engagement is absolutely vital and again I know that you're covering uh, some of those things off today but how do you ensure um, that employee engagement again is inclusive? You know, we have to recognise the brilliance that we all have and we're different, we don't do things the same so we need to provide a platform so that employees get recognised for the brilliance that they bring as opposed to just being shoehorned into the standard framework that you may have. I for inspire and involve. Um, so I think I said very early on, you know, inclusion isn't the role of one person. You absolutely do need to have, you know, a figurehead and somebody that challenge, uh, champions it. Um, you know, they have to be credible. Um, but it's the role of everybody. And I'm really passionate about ensuring that we have accessible role models and they are in front of us every single day. Some individuals may genuinely want to experience an overseas assignment but they're just not sure how to go about it or they may not be confident to put themselves forward so as a leader in an organization consider stretch assignments you know it could well be as I say that somebody um, you know starts in a really really small space but how can you weave in as I say stretch assignments to enable people to build their confidence uh, and, and, and kind of put them forward how is your organization 
modernisation building for the future? Um, you know, how do you ensure um, that you have um, a free flow of talent? Um, talent planning is absolutely critical. Um, I know I've written the book, but there's a page in the book that I think is really funny. I think many organisations at the moment do a bit of a pin the tail on the donkey type kind of, you know, talent planning. It has to be so much more than that. You know, it should really, really be considered. It should be calibrated regularly to check in, you know, what do your workforce and your individuals want? Do you really know what your individuals want in terms of their career aspirations? Or are you just kind of guessing and pot putting them into, into these sort of pigeonholes? Build for the Future is about, you know, your forward thinking. What do you have now, but how do you future-proof your organisation? And then finally, uh, we have embed, which is often the piece that many organisations forget. So I'm sure you've probably been mentally going through going, yes, we do that and we do that and we do a bit of that. So as I say, in truth, I think many of you will be touching upon some of those uh, elements. But um, for, for a lot of you, as I say, this is absolutely critical. So how do you ensure that, yes, you may currently have the most brilliant advocate for diversity at the helm of your organisation. But if they are to leave, what happens? So it's about how do you make sure it's weaved through absolutely everything that you do. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint, so you have to have resilience. I think I said right at the beginning, you know, you're going to have to unpick generations of ingrained behaviours and mindsets and beliefs and organisational structures and working practices and all of those other things. So it's going to take time, but it's about having that resilience. Um, and it's also important to say it's about having zero tolerance, but you can only have zero tolerance if you have set the expectations clear in the first instance. Communication is vital. And finally, it's important to celebrate success. Um, you know, you, we, it's hard, um, but people are doing some really, really brilliant things. So make sure that you are celebrating those successes well as they happen. You know, you're shining a spotlight on the talent. You're shining a spotlight on individuals. You're shining a spotlight on assignments that you're able to offer.